Hello there Aquarius, welcome to your reading. So um, I've got some really interesting images that came through. So bear with me. Um, first of all, so I see this, uh, this warrior couple. They're wearing what looks like um, medieval style, I guess, um, armor. So one is a woman, the other one is a man. So I don't know if they're romantically involved, but they're kind of uh, standing next to each other. The, the man, he has like a broadsword. Uh, one of those big swords that you have to hold with two hands and the woman she's got um a, a smaller sword and she's hold um the other hand has like a shield and they're surrounded by people that wants to i guess kill them and then um so you know there are two of them their their backs are to each other they're like trying to protect each other but also uh fight off the people that have encircle them so I, I see like eight or nine people circling around them and so it flashes to this tunnel of light so i guess like they must have perished and then i see the same two people the the man and the woman but the woman is wearing in modern day clothes she's wearing what looks like a business suit and she looks like she could be a secretary or a paralegal there's a lot of uh, documents and files on her desk and then she's sitting down at her desk and the man is standing up and he's wearing a suit and he seems to be like her boss or something like that and he's uh he's telling her he's giving her details about a very very important case and then she's taking notes so right away when i saw this i almost feel like many of you might be in a relationship where it's a reincarnational where there might have been you know uh, a shared past life situation and what I feel is um, there is residual energies from those past lives that are carried over to this lifetime and the first thing that I felt was this very intense you know life or death type of a situation where if you were in that past life where you were you know um, fighting with each other against your enemies or whatever um, there's an element here about, you know, having tremen a tremendous amount of trust that the other person has your back, having a tremendous amount of trust that the other person is not going to, you know, stab you in the back and leave you for dead and save their own skin. Um, so I feel like some of you are in that type of a relationship where there is an immense, immense, immense amount of trust that you have with one another. And, um, going to the other image where it's it's almost like a bo boss subordinate type of a relationship there might be a little bit of a power dynamics or power struggles in the relationship where one person feels like they make the executive decisions and then the other person has to obey or one person feels like they're in more of a subordinate role and they have to cater to the other person. So that, that's what I'm feeling here. And I feel like those energies are carried over into your present relationship. Okay, so for those who are in a relationship and that resonates with you, what I feel is um, on the one hand, you know, when we are re reunited with a soul, especially um, somebody that we shared a past life, love relationship with um, it can feel very magical it can feel like you know you talk to this person for five minutes and you feel like you've known them a lifetime it can bring stir up a lot of passion and a lot of um, just indescribable magnetism it, it's almost like you're drawn into each other's orbits okay there might have been a lot of synchronicities a lot of um, um, I, I feel like chance encounter where you kind of run into each other you know unexpectedly there's a lot of that and i feel like it is a stemming from some type of a past life connection i'm also seeing as well the you you both really inspire each other because this past life energy is all about growth and expansion and it's it's almost like there's a so much trust involved in the relationship where no matter what you want the other person to do well you want the other person to be happy you want the other person to thrive and you want the other person to survive okay to to do well to excel professionally uh you're not threatened by the other person outgrowing you and vice versa they're not threatened about you outgrowing them two people just really want what's best for one another 
And um, whenever I, I see this sense of responsibility too, and um, it's coming up in this card. We have here the Two of Swords agreeing to disagree okay this is like kind of like that stalemate it's almost like that truce okay um we're not going to you know aggravate each other we're not going to continue to you know argue over this we can agree to disagree so i feel that there's a sense of you know that yin yang energy that male female um i guess like um opposite where the two of you are very very different from each other but together you know how to harmonize the energies you know how to make things work and despite your differences there is a great degree of trust here um the reason i i brought that up is because those images came out really strongly and i feel for some of you even if it's not a, a love work relationship partner I feel like you're having some type of a chance encounter with somebody that you've known before in a previous lifetime where you really need it to depend on each other in order to survive and no matter what there was so much trust and faith and and um, you know like that sense of personal responsibility to one another so it's like a very beautiful type of an energy but at the same time past life energies can keep us very stuck okay um, ways of doing patterns of behaving um, all of those things can be a little bit restrictive is, is that's what I'm sensing so breaking away from that and you know a lot of people do past life regression so that they know what challenges they face in their past life and how that has really affected them in this lifetime or how that has created very um it's, it's almost like unexplained phobias or unexplained fears or or cycles of behaving so that they can break those cycles so i feel like this past life snippet that i'm seeing is hopefully allowing some of you to kind of leave it in the past and try to move forward okay and um what's coming out very strongly for me is it's almost like you know if you are in that lifetime where you're 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 fighting off like eight other people you're not in that survival mode fight or flight mode anymore and so you have to kind of be strategic about using the resources that are around you in order to make the situation a little bit more harmonious okay so that's what i'm getting um what's coming in for you especially for you know this month I have here the Princess of Wands, and this is in the traditional Rider Waite deck. This is more like the Page of Wands. New passion, new energies, new drive and ambition, wanting to soar for the sun, wanting to um, show yourself as somebody who's capable and competent and, you know, able to get work done. So I see you coming into this month very enthusiastic to get a lot of work done, to um, kind of show yourself, show your skills and to, you know, feel it's almost like embracing things, embracing new opportunities, not shying away from a challenge, wanting to take on even more responsibility so that you can learn so that you can grow so that you can expand so i feel like you're coming in very very confident for many of you you're looking for work opportunities mainly because you feel like your skills might not be properly properly excuse me utilized in one environment so you're seeking more work you're seeking more responsibilities or even more duties to kind of showcase your talents for others of you, you might take on a second job or you might look elsewhere, mainly because I do feel there is an element here about um, lacking in financial resources. Okay, so you might have, you know, overspent, you might have overindulged and this month you're finding yourself a little bit in the red and you're just like, okay, where can I, you know, cut corners when it comes to my expenses or where can I make more money so that I am able to make more so I feel like you're very very motivated to go to work if anything to increase your financial earnings okay 
I see many of you going through your, your, your bank accounts, going through your ledgers, itemizing everything, and then trying to figure out where you can skimp, where you can save up, where you can, you know, cut corners when it comes to your expenses. So a little bit of fears when it comes to your finances, when it comes to uh, moving money around from the savings account to the checking account and things like that. I see a lot of that um, coming in for this month and I see you itemizing to figure out, you know, if, for example, if you're contemplating a move, how much is that going to cost? How much is it going to cost for a new house, a new apartment, and especially to um, renovate or even um, to arrange, I'm seeing, and also like buy new furniture. So I feel like you're itemizing everything. You're putting things up for sale. You're cleaning and decluttering your environment. Um, there's a little bit of stress coming through for this month. I feel like there's a lot of electronic communication coming back and forth. So I feel many of you are putting things up for sale or you are doing something where you're selling things electronically and you have a lot of buyers. Okay. So like they're coming in and asking you like possibly even reducing the price can you you know rather than so for example if you're selling something for fifty dollars they're like can you give it to me for forty dollars so there's this constant back and forth and i feel like you can you know kind of put your foot down just to save yourself you know the emotional anguish just put your foot down and say oh i'm sorry whatever price i, I listed that's the final price i'm very sorry about that so that's what I see. I feel like people are bargaining you, with you, but they're not doing it face to face. They're doing it through emails. And it just seems like it's a drawn out process. So they would um, they would ask you a question and it's not until the next day that you respond to them. And then the next day they respond to you. So it feels like it drags on for more than a week when you just want to get these items out of your space. That's what I'm feeling here. So I see a lot of cleaning up, decluttering, um, which is good. I, I feel like it's going to put much needed, you know, resources back in your pocket. So traveling light, um, decluttering your environment, cleaning things up. I feel like it's going to be very fruitful. Okay. Um, what I also have as well, um, this is the nine of cups. Okay. This is a card about emotional fulfillment, getting your wishes met. And, uh, when I saw this cup, you know how, um, I, I don't know I don't know how to describe this but you know how some people they arrange like for New Year's for example or, or like at a wedding they arrange all the champagne glasses almost in a pyramid and then they pour the champagne from the top cup and then it trickles down to all the other ones that's what I'm feeling and you know Aquarius one of the habits that you have is uh, in order for you to feel completely, completely happy, you feel like everything has to be perfect. Everything like it's almost like I can only be happy if all of my ducks are in a row. I can only be happy if all the areas of my life are perfectly balanced. OK, so work has to be perfect. I have to love my job. My relationship has to be perfect on top of the work being perfect. I have to be with my soulmate. And then on top of work and my love life being perfect, I have to have like, you know, groups of friends or, you know, group associations that are really emotionally fulfilling. And then on top of that, family situation has to be perfect. So everything in your life you feel like has to be at its best in order for you to say, I'm happy. And I feel like there's a little bit of a fallacy when we look at things in that way. It makes us too perfectionistic. It, it's almost like putting a lot of unnecessary pressure on yourself to make sure that everything in your life is stable and perfect and, and just, you know, everything is in its place rather than really enjoying the imperfections and rather than just enjoying the moments of happiness as they come in. So I see almost this obsessive need from your end, not only to control things, four of pentacles, it's the miser card, but also you're trying so hard to 
exact perfection in all areas of your life and you're not giving yourself a break. You're trying so hard to be everything to everybody and you're not giving yourself the time to just be you. You're measuring, I guess, like your ideals of happiness as being, you know, this this total state of completion where everything is is neat and orderly and perfect. And you're putting a lot of unnecessary pressure on yourself. I feel like many of you have come have become aware of this and you're shifting to a place where you are more welcoming when it comes to, you know, the the organized chaos. Like you're you're welcoming it and you're okay with that. And so what I feel in, in terms of this spread overall, when it comes to your advice is, this is a square, right? It, it is very, very stable, but at the same time, it's a little bit rigid. It's a little bit uninspiring. So they're trying to shift you away from this and to allow this change to happen in your life. A change that is a little bit more open-ended, change that is also a little bit more like organic, Okay, so not seeing things as this, this four corners and everything has to have a place and it's, you know, um, building things up like one by one and, and, and needing to itemize everything. They're telling you to kind of allow the process to organically unfold and to work from a space where you're, I, I want to say, allowing the universe, I guess, to take over. What I really like about this card and um, this symbol of Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of luck and expansion, okay? And so you're being helped along the way and is to kind of allow you to take a step back, not try to control everything and just let things unfold in a timely manner, okay? In a, a timely manner that is divinely guided, okay? So aside from that, the other thing that I'm picking up here is uh, let's talk about the relationship partner or whoever it is that is heavily on your mind that you are thinking about. We have here the Eight of Wands. This is a very non-traditional deck, okay? And uh, what I feel is for some of you, the Eight of Wands is, you know, the, the fast, swift communication. In this deck, the energy is a little bit different. You're dealing with somebody who communication between you and this person can be a little bit contentious and can be a little bit jarring. Going to back to what I mentioned before about, you know, the, um, the situation where the two of you might not really see eye to eye on many, many things. The two of you as well, and I do see as well, you know, a lot of people in same-sex relationships in this um, spread as well. And despite being the same gender, there are just a lot of differences between the two of you where you might have different cultural upbringing. You might have, um, you might have different religious beliefs. You might even have different ways in which you look at relationships and parenting. And, you know, one person might want children. The other person might not. One person is a homebody. The other person is very adventurous. So I see this opposition between you and, and the other person, but for whatever reason, the two of you have very similar values, okay? And that's what's weird about it because let's say a value of yours, Aquarius, is, let's just say, for many of you at, at least, okay? It's almost like um, doing things to the best of your capabilities, okay? The person that you're dealing with, they have the same values as well. And because of that, on a values basis, things work out well despite all the differences, okay? And then let, let's just say another value of yours is, you know, um, working really, really hard, okay? So for example, if your boss gives you an assignment and they're like, um, I need this by the end of the day, even if you have to, you know, stay very, very late in order to get it done, once you tell somebody you're gonna get it done by the end of the day, you're gonna get it done. So even if you have to stay behind, you still will do it. And you, you, 
even if you can you know finish it by like 5 p.m close of business day but if the quality is lacking you don't mind staying behind to perfect it and to make it the best that it can be before you submit it and i feel like your partner has the same type of mentality and when two people have the same types of values it basically means that despite all the differences, despite all the ideological, you know, clashes, despite the religious differences, despite the cultural differences, things can still work because you have the same values. And that's what I'm seeing here. Um, I see for some of you, your happiness, and, and this is something you're very afraid of. I see for some of you you feel like your happiness is has to come at somebody else's expense and i don't know why that is okay so it, it could be you want your partner to chip in and do a lot more than they're doing but at the same time you feel guilty about asking it's it's almost like some of you are you know once again running yourself ragged trying to be so perfect trying to keep the house afloat trying to keep your professional life moving and trying to you know keep the kids clean and fed and clothed and you know put to bed and then trying to balance out you know making the time to to see all of your friends you're running yourself ragged trying to keep everything afloat and you want your partner to chip in but you also understand that your partner as well you know because of this values your partners are also like you they're trying to get things sorted out and moving along in their life and you feel like I really need you to step in and help me but is it selfish for me to ask this of my partner of course it's not selfish for you to ask but you feel that way and so your happiness does not have to come at anybody's expense I feel like that is a mentality or a false paradigm that you're taking on because you're so self-efficient uh, self-sufficient most of the time that you feel it shows weakness or it shows a lack of being able to be on top of things when you have to ask somebody for help okay and I feel like it is within your right and it is something that you deserve you have to be able to be open and honest with your partner so it's okay to ask for help and then this image about your happiness is coming at somebody else's expense so I have here nine of swords and then nine of cups trading one for the other some of you might be in a relationship with somebody who is already in another relationship and if they were to leave that person in order to be with you because like i said there's some type of a past life energy here it is really really strong so they're being they're they're feeling this draw or this really magnetic um almost like uh, electrifying lightning bolts okay electrifying pull towards you and you feel like my happiness is coming at somebody else's expense they have to leave somebody in order to be with you and there's a lot of guilt about that because with the Aquarius person you don't want things to happen at anybody else's expense you feel like it's not fair and you feel almost like yes you want this but at the same time you would feel really really bad that somebody else is losing out on something in order for you to win something that's what it feels like to me so i see this inner conflict within you about not going not accepting something that you really 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 want because it's coming at the expense of somebody else okay um the person that you're dealing with i have here the moon a really strong almost like um telepathic mutual understanding between two people where emotionally you're definitely on the same page this is a, a really balanced card when it comes to the imagery in this deck it's almost like long distance and despite the distance the two of you are still very very much spiritually connected okay and once again this is a very very strong past life type of a connection that i'm seeing here where there's a big sense of responsibility uh not wanting to hurt one another not wanting uh you know it, it's it's like a mutual understanding where we have each other and then i also feel like the the communication might oftentimes be a little bit 
um, kinetic. It's it seems very ADD to me. It's like you can talk about every topic under the sun. And then within like a five minute conversation, things start here and they veer off to a very, very different direction. So it's like you can talk about family, you can talk about work, you can talk about, you know, your car, you can talk about your pets. And then you can like veer off on really, really tangential topics. So I feel like everything is being discussed. A lot of communication going back and forth between um, you and the, the partner or whoever it is that you're dealing with. I'm also seeing as well, you're giving a lot more communication than they're giving back. And I feel like they might feel a little bit overloaded. Okay, so that's what I'm, I'm sensing. It's almost like you're, you're bombarding them with way too much communication. And they're still trying to figure out how to answer your first question. And you've already shot them like three other questions. So I feel like it would be better if you slow down when it comes to the communication so that um, it allows the two of you to understand each other fully and to discuss one topic at a time thoroughly and completely before you move on to another topic. Does that make sense? So. I feel like there's a lot of communication, but when it comes to substantial communication, I feel like you guys are just like scratching the surface and you're not talking about things thoroughly enough in order to resolve or in order to fully express or fully um, explore that topic before you completely move on. Okay, so slow down the communication a little bit, asking the other person more follow-up questions so that you understand where they're coming from because I feel like they feel a little bit overwhelmed. They're, they're, they're like still trying to figure out the first part and you're already, you know, three, four, five steps ahead of them. And I feel like they, I feel like they feel a little bit overwhelmed, okay? Your partner is um, going through some major transformative changes in their, their love life as well. And what I mean is uh, if in the past they've just been like going through the motions, you know, um, doing what is expected of them, doing what is culturally expected of them or what is, you know, socially expected of them. So, for example, if they are a male and they're in their 30s, they're just like, OK, by the time I'm in my 30s, I need to be established with a career so that I can get married, so that I can, you know, uh, have a kid when I'm 35, because by the time I'm 40, it's going to be too old. Um, that's what I feel is going through your partner's head. This is somebody who's very stable, who's very reliable. And I, I feel like they're very strong as well. They seem like very well-rounded and they feel like they're very family oriented. I'm seeing this rainbow here and it's almost like that completion. Okay, everything is like under the rainbow. So I feel like it's somebody who's very, very family oriented. And um, so they, they've been going through the motions as to what's expected of them. And I feel like it's not until the past two years where they kind of stopped themselves and to, to look at, you know, Am I doing this because it's making me happy or am I doing this because it's expected of me? So I feel like they're going through some major transformations when it comes to being able to clearly identify what brings them emotional happiness versus what brings them stability or versus what they're doing that is, you know, appeasing everybody, but that's not really making them happy. I also feel as well, they're starting to understand you a little bit more. So this could be, you know, your um, significant other, your spouse, or even the person that you are interacting with. They're starting to understand you a lot more. They're starting to understand your way of thinking. They're starting to understand that when you're, they're dealing with you, what they see is pretty much what they got because I feel with this moon where they have been very confused about you in the past because 
they kept reading between the lines. They didn't take you at face value. And so now it's like they stop reading between the lines. They just take everything that you say at face value. And I feel like they're starting to get it. They're starting to have like a much better understanding of you. And they're starting to feel as if, you know, I don't have to fear this person. So if in the past, their guard has been up about you, if they've been blocking you or guarding, like, you know, putting up their walls or just doing whatever it is that um, to, to kind of uh, defend themselves against you for whatever reason, maybe they're overwhelmed or maybe they're afraid of the connection as well. Maybe they're afraid of the responsibilities in the relationship. They're putting their guard down. They're starting to understand you. They're starting to think like you and they're starting to also, they're, they're starting to also, uh, I feel like, you know, you're bringing in awareness or you're bringing a lot of ideas or ways of doing that they are welcoming. So I see them kind of absorbing your energy a little bit, which I feel is really good because once they start doing that, Aquarius people are really hard to understand, but I feel like you have a partner or somebody here that is starting to really understand you and they're kind of absorbing your energy and that will allow them to understand you a lot more, okay? So that's what I'm feeling here. There's going to be a lot of communication. Uh, there are a lot of changes that are happening in their lives. And then I also feel like I also feel like whatever has been troublesome or problematic about the communication in the past, now there is some type of a, it's almost like a peace offering here. A peace offering, okay, a stalemate. We don't have to fight, we can agree to disagree. But I feel like they're taking more of your energy with the sword, suit of swords and they're starting to understand you. Um, moving forward for for this month at least i feel like you have to be easier on yourself i feel like you need to kind of embrace new opportunities and new energies especially when it comes to you know um fun socializing and just you know going out i feel for many of you don't keep yourself cooped up in the house out of fear of you know seasonal depression get yourself a lot more physically active okay so I'm gonna leave it at that Aquarius um, I hope the reading is helpful for you guys I do wish you the best okay take care oh and one last thing um, I am no longer giving private readings so for those of you who are still emailing me I guess you might not have heard the announcement last month but I'm no longer doing private readings. So if you are interested in a private reading, I've put down a link in the description box for um, a psychic, her name is Bridget. She is phenomenal, I highly recommend her. If you haven't already, please book an appointment with her. She is amazing. And um, I've used her services in the past and I highly recommend her. So if you would do that, click on the description box in the, um, click on the link in the description box, excuse me, and her scheduling website is right there, okay? I'll talk to you soon.